uh, being the shepherd of a church is a huge responsibility. What we want to ask you is, what was leadership development like for you before becoming a pastor? Um, I actually have a book. That book is called The Art of Following. And The Art of Following talks about kind of my journey, if you will. There's really only one biblical way of development, and that is through the association with someone who's already in ministry. And so I served under my pastor for nine years. I was his armor bearer. I uh, went everywhere he went. I, I took care of all of the things that need to be handled in ministry with him. The anointing is not taught, it's caught. And the word for the anointing uh, actually means to rub or to smear. That's what the anointing means. And so you don't get that without having proximity. And so proximity, environment, and influence is everything. And so being close to my pastor, a lot of the anointing began to develop in me. Most people who want to be in ministry don't want to sit around long enough to allow that development process to happen. And so because they're too quick to jump out there, they will jump out in the ministry and really not be ready. I agree. I think that you're supposed to be sent, not went. And so you oftentimes have a lot of people that will start a ministry or start a church um, based off of being hurt from a previous church. And it's so, you know, it becomes like a smorgasbord, like, well, I didn't like the way they did this and I didn't like the way they did that, so let me go start my own ministry or let me go start my own church and I'm going to do it this way. And so there really is an order, there's a structure to follow things just like in the secular world. You have to go through a series of training and you have to prove yourself and there is an order to that. And so it's the same thing in ministry and I think oftentimes people don't correlate or connect that, um, but there are rules to it, at least to do it right. So I totally agree. And you guys should get the Art of Following if you don't have it. And you guys watching also can go onto our website and get the Art of Following GeneHernan.com. Well. Yes. <laughs> Pick up the Art of Following. It'll bless you. Pick up two. Give one to your friend. <laughs> we know that a marriage uh, or simply the, the beginning of a relationship just comes with so many challenges and realities that require attention. We want to ask both of you, uh, what are some of the expectations of togetherness and what are some of the boundaries uh, that should be established? It's a good question, but I think that really is specific. I think it's different for every couple. I think it really depends on the people, um, what their expectations are. Um, I think it's just very specific. I know in regards to us, um, we're a little bit different than most couples um, because we're, we're always together. We work together, we're in ministry together, we're husband and wife. We, you know, we have a family, so we were, and we also work from home. So we are with each other 24 seven. So I feel like initially when we first got together, it was like, I always wanted to be with him. And I've been in past relationships where it's like you try to limit the time or the activities and different things you do with people. But for us, it was like immediately, we just always want to be together and we don't get sick of each other, I don't think. <laughs> you know, sometimes people, but that's our personality. So that's what I'm saying. It's specific for every couple because some couples may be like, no, you know what I mean? So I think it just depends. I think in, uh, in ministry, one of the, the dynamics for us, because we stay so very close together, there's a protection there. Um, I know a lot of ministers and minister, you know, that really their spouses are not involved in the ministry with them. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, sometimes people are attracted to the anointing on your life and not you. And so you have to be careful because you can expose yourself being alone all the time to people whose intentions are not the best. And you have to, uh, not that I don't trust her, not that she doesn't trust me, but the truth of the matter is we have to create accountability uh, in our lives so that we don't fall prey to things that we don't want in our marriage. Okay, so what we have here is we have three different thicknesses. We have more of an angel hair, we have more of a linguine, and then we have a thicker uh, wide cut, which is more like a fettuccine. And you wanna make sure that you sprinkle flour in and toss it so that they don't stick together because then when you put them in the water, you don't want them to be clumped up. Pastor Shana, question. So as you know, we're newlyweds and um, we plan on having kids in the near future. So I did want to ask you, how did you prepare yourself to be the mother that you are today, especially in ministry? I feel like 
All that I did really never fully prepared me for the things that I encountered having a child. Um, I think the one thing that I will say is, I remember we went to our doctor's appointment and he had given us this baby's book. And it literally was like this, it looked like a Webster dictionary. And so when we came home, we put, um, we had a, like a hard copy Bible and then we put the baby book and it was like twice the thickness of the Bible. So we threw out the baby book and we're like, we'll just go with the Bible. And, <laughs> Cause there's like, there's no way that I can retain all this information. And the one thing that I did figure out is that every child is different. They're unique, they have their own personality. So even though as well-meaning as people were, they would give us like advice and different things like that. Like your child's gonna be this way and this is what you do when they do this and that. And it turned out that none of that happened. Our was such a different baby that we had to to mold ourselves, or we had to learn her personality and the way she operated. So a lot of the things we, I would say, we kind of learned on the fly. Um, the one thing that I did do though is becoming pregnant was really the first time that I realized that I had no control over the situation and I had to 100% trust God in everything that our child would be healthy that you know she would have I would have all the nutrients that I need she would have all the nutrients she needed so that was really the first time that I fully just was like okay God this is all you and there's nothing left that I can do and so I'm gonna have to trust you that whatever it is that we um, are gonna have to do as parents you're just gonna have to help us and we have the Holy Ghost and we have wisdom so I don't know that there ever is a way to be prepared uh, because our lives have changed so drastically yeah. and you know people said things like make sure you get enough sleep and there's a lot of things people tell you that you're like oh okay whatever yeah but you never know how bad it gets until you've been sleeping you have deprived. to live it yeah you yeah. have to literally go through <laughs> you have to live it yourself and um but wouldn't wouldn't change it for the world i oh, mean to look at that face every morning every day when you come back through the door and she runs up and you know, kisses you, there's yeah. nothing, nothing in the world that can take the place of that. Oh. At this stage, you can actually set this aside. You can drape it over something and dry it. Because this is what dry pasta is made out of. It's just dried. So you can actually set this aside. Just make sure you've got plenty of flour so it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. And you literally can make this nest, put it in the freezer, and or you can just let it completely dry just like this and then you just throw it like a little noodle bomb throw it in the water and you got pasta okay so what we're going to do is we have our different types of pasta and so we have a pot of boiling water anytime you're making pasta you definitely want to salt your water you want it to be um, like sea salt or uh, i should say sea water because this is a way to get flavor into your into your pasta and so we have these little baskets and you can actually put four of these baskets into this pot at the same time so the idea is let's say you are uh, cooking with friends and family and everybody wants a different style you can have up to four different types cooking in the same pot so we're going to take the fettuccine drop it in one the angel hair drop it in the other and please remember that because of the thickness, they cook in different times. So what you'll find is the fettuccine should cook uh, most likely in two minutes. Uh, the linguine will probably be about a minute and a half, and the angel hair will probably be just about a minute to a minute and a half. And so that way, if you remember which one's which, you can pull them out when they're ready. And so you just drop those in and shake them up a little bit. And in two minutes, you will have pasta. At the table, quick tip. What you can do is if you have garlic and if you want to make a uh, garlic paste, the kosher salt is a great abrasive. And so what you do is you put the kosher salt on top. You use the uh, front of your knife. And what will happen is the salt will actually turn it into a paste. And so you can just scrape it up. And now what you have is garlic paste. There's your at the table quick tip. Okay, so once your pasta is done, you just pull each one of your containers out, drain the excess water off, and And there you have it. All right, so we're gonna make our brown butter sage sauce. And so 
What I want to show you is how to chop up sage, or really any type of herb. You just take the leaves and you stack them together, like that, and then you just roll it up, just like that, and then And if you're making what's called a chiffonade, little ribbons, that's what it is. In a pot that's already heated up, and when you're making a brown butter, you have to be very careful. This is not something you can walk away and come back and check it, because it goes from brown butter to burnt in literally a second. And so it's something that you have to keep watching and make sure that you don't get too far away from it. What'll start to happen is there will be a um, kind of a nutty smell and it'll almost smell like you're baking uh, nuts in the oven or something like that. And what's happening is all of the solids that are in the butter are actually starting to cook and brown. And that's what gives you brown butter. And so it's important that you use a pan that's a light color pan because you need to be able to see the color as it changes. There's a point where it becomes, it'll become very, very frothy. And you just keep cooking it until it starts to turn brown. Yeah. So while you're doing it, I have a question for you. Um, sure. in, in your book, Elephant in the Bedroom, uh, you mention a, a lot of things that people don't want to talk about. So my question to you is, why is communicate, why can communication be such a barrier in relationships? That's a good question. I think there's a lot of things that cause people um, in relationships, but I think the biggest one is a fear that the relationship will change because you're having difficult conversations. And the truth of the matter is uh, you have to be at a place where you understand the person you're with and y'all have to have an agreement that the relationship is never on the line. Even in our staff meetings, one of the first things we say is that we attack the problem, not the person. And our relationships are never on the line just because we don't see it the same way. It's very immature to allow the relationship to be affected because you guys don't agree. And so difficult conversations are necessary. Now if you notice, it's very frothy on the top, but if you notice when I pull through it, see how you can see how brown it is. Right. So now, what you do, close the fire, throw in your sage. It's gonna bubble and pop. Garlic, salt, and your pepper. And that is uh, half a teaspoon, or yeah, half a teaspoon of each, three teaspoons of garlic. And if you want the exact recipes, you can go on geneherndon.com and you can actually get uh, and download all the recipes from these episodes. You guys smell it? It smells really yeah, it smells good. Delicious. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna give you guys just a little bit so you can taste it, but we'll, we're gonna plate it up completely at the end. But I'm gonna give you a little bit of your hair and a little bit of that. And we're gonna take touch of the brown butter sage sauce and mix that together. Well, you guys can get a quick taste. Wow. Wow. I take it it's good. Wow, it's really <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. So much flavor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, such simple ingredients. It just is so tasty, you just never think. And whenever you're making pasta, you always want your sauce to be ready. That way you can always just toss your pasta in the sauce and you're good to go. All right, so we wanna thank you for joining us for this particular episode. Uh, coming up next week, we are going to be doing our uh, glazed baby carrots. So we want to invite you to tune in next week. Uh, I wouldn't miss it. It's going to be awesome. Until then, 
We'll see you on the other side. Hi everyone, I just wanted to take a second and ask you as you're watching these videos to share them with your friends and family. Like, comment. If you're actually cooking some of the food that we're sharing with you, I want you to post a picture of your final product and tag us in it so we can see the things that you guys are doing. So like, share, subscribe. I also want you to go on to our YouTube channel and to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe our videos as we share things with you. Thanks so much.